I started off trying to make some nice clean cuts on this lovely demo day. <laughs> demo day. I don't, why do people love demo day? Isn't it, shouldn't it really be, hey, the project's finally done because it took way too long day? Yeah, that's the day I like. From the get-go, I was planning on repainting these coat hooks, but because of that little mishap earlier, I was going to have to tear into this wall further than I expected. I'm going to stop the video just for a second, and that's where this project turned in from a one-weekend project into a multi-weekend, and that's because as I was looking under the stairs, I realized there was actually a foot of dead space. And the wife decided she'd rather have a foot more in the entryway than a foot of storage. So that's where you're going to see me tearing out this wall. Before we get too far into this project, it is disclaimer time. Really, that is, if you are taking down a wall, please make sure it is not a load-bearing wall. If you don't know what a load-bearing wall is, then this project's not for you. No, don't, no, really folks, don't let that scare you. If you don't know what that is, um, it is definitely worth the couple hundred bucks or 500 bucks to call a uh, structural engineer to tell you exactly what you can and cannot take down. So luckily, right smack dab in the middle, that 4x4 four by four, four by four post is kind of the cornerstone to my upstairs. So I knew I couldn't touch that post, but these other couple 2x4s that I was taking down were not structural in any way. The stair stringers went all the way up to the landing, so it really was just kind of blocking out the partition and doing nothing. So I had no issue taking those down and, and really squaring that back up. Yeah, make sure that everything is level and plumb, or else when you go to do the drywall, you're going to have some wavy lumps in the drywall. And speaking of drywall, man, this project sure had some funky cutouts, but I'm not an expert at drywall by all means, so don't take my advice other than, hey, if you want to throw up a bunch of extra mud that's needed, well, do what I do. As far as electrical goes, really this is about all you get and that's because first of all the power was off so i didn't have much light to work with and there really wasn't much to it all i did was replace that box and that light switch very simple easy thing uh, this was a three-way switch so keep that in mind if you're having to replace a switch if i were to be starting over this is one thing i actually would change that is the height of that base uh, board I would actually raise it up a couple inches to match the height of whatever baseboard you're running along the bottom. And that just makes it a nice uh, even flow transition. After multiple passes of mudding and sanding and mudding and sanding and your boy running by with what has he got? Yes, of course, he's got the paint roller that I didn't even realize until I went to start painting. And then I was wondering where all the hair was coming from. And yep, even though I don't have a dog, I do have three girls in the house that seem to shed more than a husky. So all the fun little stuff, tedious work that seems to take the longest time. Well, four minutes in and we're finally to a point that actually attracted you to this video. That is either making the door or getting to the storage space. So let me tell you what I did. This is a 3 16 inch um, Wayne's coating panel that I picked up from your typical big box store. I put a 2 inch uh, um, baseboard frame around it, I guess you can say. It's a primed MDF board. Uh, just keep in mind with that door I made it a half of an inch overlap all the way around and then for the uh, hinges they are concealed uh, hinges and if you're going to be doing these type of hinges you're going to need that bit right there it's called a Forstner bit you can pick it up for about 10 or 12 bucks or if you got a nice neighbor he'll let you borrow his so uh, hey thanks Kyle As always, there's going to be a little touch-up required, and don't feel bad if you're like me and you got to touch it up three or four times. So 
I want to let you know that if you've never put in hinges before, don't be scared of it. All of the packages come with templates. Um, really, that tells you exactly what and where to drill. It makes it super easy to align the screws and to make it uh, make it go flawlessly. It really is pretty easy nowadays. And of course, they are the typical soft clothes, which everybody loves. I'm betting my kids are going to have those worn out in probably less than a month. Okay, now on to the trim. What I've done is a three quarter by four inch on the base down there. And then the part that I'm attaching right now is a one and a half inch uh, by three quarter inch. Okay, back here underneath in the storage area. This is a prime example of why you never throw away any piece of wood. When we moved into our house about 12 years ago, they had these extra panels left over. There's some laminated wood flooring that was in our bathroom. And yep, they've been in the garage ever since then. Finally found a project of where to use those up. I figured might as well give the storage area a nice, smooth, clean finish. Something that the kids would want to play in and wait. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why I did that because yes, the kids love to play in there now and you'll see at the very end My daughter did end up sleeping in here the first night. It was done You may recognize those coat hooks and boards from previously in the video. That's because, yes, they are the same ones. There is absolutely no need to go out and buy new when a lovely rattle can black and some white paint that I know everybody has left over from some other project will work just fine. Since we have about 12.5 coats per coat hook in my family, it is definitely a necessity to anchor those suckers into studs. Whether you do that on yours or not, eh, I'll leave it up to you. This is a little detail that I actually really like. If you notice, I offset the hooks from the bottom and the top, and that's because before we did have the same number of hooks, but they were directly on top of each other, and so the kids' coats would completely get covered up by the ones on top. So this way, going to every other and having them offset makes it nice and easy. All the kids can reach their own hooks, and they're not being covered. We are down to the final touches here, and I had to throw in this last little clip of my little dude who always has to follow me around and help me out. I don't mind, and I'm kind of excited to see how long he stays interested in my projects. The project is complete, and I kind of like how it turned out. There are a couple little things I changed, but it uh, didn't take long to fill it up. So there are a couple little things. For example, like that little uh, transition piece, if someone's a finished carpenter uh, and wants to chime in on that, well, by all means, go ahead. That baseboard right there, I don't know if it's a baseboard, that uh, board that I put right there, it is just a temporary piece. Uh, that's just because, yeah, eventually this tile will be gone. We're going to be adding hardwoods to match the kitchen and... Yep, well, that'll be a preview for the next project. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm going to end just with a couple shots here. And yes, my kids loved it so much that they did fight over who got to sleep in it first. And so my two daughters did sleep in there. Uh, no, we did not pressure them or Harry Potter them into it. But uh, either way, it was a fun project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. If you like these kinds of builds, then, well... Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.